Hello, everybody. It's me, Coach Wayne. And today we're going to be talking about confidence. Fun fact, this is actually a exercise that my coach has put me on. And I have no problem with confidence. Anybody that knows me, extremely confident in what I know my abilities are, which helps me on my daily journey, whether it be in real estate or speaking or coaching or podcasting, right? So this little exercise, my homework, I've decided to turn into a podcast because I'm a firm believer in what's something that I can do that I can multi-purpose. If I write this paper, can I use it for something else? Well, in this instance, I've decided to take what I've written and turn it into a podcast form. So this is my homework. I've been working on for five weeks and I think I'm in a comfortable spot with it and I wanna share it with you guys. So I hope you enjoy. You're listening to the Productive Not Busy Podcast where our mission is to make you more money so you'll have less stress and more free time. It's all about mindset, attitude and taking action. And your host, Wayne Weathersby, knows how to make that happen. He's negotiated and closed over $150 million in contracts while building businesses with proven success strategies that he wants to share with you. So if you're ready to make some real money, then let's get to it. Here's Coach Wayne. So everybody has the power to cultivate the confidence it takes to be able to achieve whatever you want. doesn't matter what it is. So this podcast, my homework exercise that I'm sharing with you, will hopefully provide you with a plan to get started in your quest for confidence and help you accomplish whatever your ultimate dream is. Okay? So first and foremost, you'll develop a clear image of what your dream is whether your your dream job, your dream life, whatever that is, what it looks like. Okay? Then you'll learn the truth about confidence, what it is, what it feels like, how it'll change my life or your life. Selecting a role model of someone you see as confident is an important part of the journey, and that's what I did. Next, you'll discover how to maintain consistent motivation with action steps to keep your motivation in turbo, high gear. And finally, we'll give you tips on finding your own inspiration. Once you're inspired, your confidence will reach huge levels. And that'll compel you to move closer and closer to whatever your dream or your desire is. Okay? Expect success. And enjoy this journey as you apply my concepts to develop your confidence. I promise your life will change in ways that you can't imagine. Okay? So number one, you have to visualize your dream, whatever that is. In order to go after your dream, it's important to have a clear idea of what you're seeking. When you can define the life or the job that you, you want to live or that you want to acquire, when your dreams come true, your passion then will ignite, right? And that's one thing that people miss is the passion part. Once your passion is burning, then you're compelled to develop the confidence you require to achieve that and anything else that you want. So explore the following questions, right, that I had to ask myself in order to accomplish this exercise, okay? I want you to take these questions to aid you in visualizing what your desires might look like, All right? Number one is who will be living with you? Think about it. An important part of the future you crave will likely include other people. When you imagine your dream life, who else do you include in that picture? The better you can visualize the people or the person that you fancy, who you'll want near you more than anybody else, the more you'll beef up your confidence level. You'll begin to think, I'm working hard to make that dream come true. And I want this person, a spouse, a child, somebody you met, 
randomly to be with you. It's going to happen. Okay. Next is what will I or you be doing? Thinking about what you want in life is your brilliant exercise because it will help you live in such a way that your dream will eventually materialize. Visualize what you'll be doing. For example, consider, I don't know, the transportation method you'll use to get around. Maybe you'll ride the bus or the subway or a new car, right? Perhaps you'll be driving a super nice car or walking through a really cool community to get where you want to be. Consider how you'll be spending your spare time in your dream life. Okay, imagine what you'll be doing in your self-designed future, okay? Will, will, will this place you in the mindset that will move you closer to your goals? If you're super excited, you're going to change your mindset. You're going to change your attitude. You're going to change your habits to go after that new shiny object. Your confidence will soar as you entertain all these thoughts of how you'll pass your time and things are going to be better. Next, maybe it's a career change. Which career will you be working in? Okay, that's some, you know, somebody's chasing their dream job. Now, we're getting to some real specifics here about what you or I might want in life, how you'll earn the money to live that dream existence. Okay, maybe you'll be an artist or something living in a small apartment in an extra room over an art studio. Okay, perhaps you plan to become a traveling salesperson where you occasionally venture out of the country to contact potential clients. Or you ho hope to open your own small business in a town where you can walk to work. Something, right? Just think, visualize is what I'm saying. And then think about what your environment might look like in that. Maybe you've seen people working in a career that you want on television or in the movies and you fancy that. As you imagine yourself carrying out those duties of your career that you desire, your confidence is going to go through the roof. Okay, where will you be living? As you progress through answering these questions, you can see how your dreams are starting to materialize, right? You've probably already had bits of thoughts about how you'd be living just by working on the above questions. Now, focus on that question. The ideal location of where you'll be living when your dream life comes true. I wrote down, you know, in magic marker here, you know, I was trying to visualize outside of my body, right? Making it general so other people could consume this content as well. So maybe you're visualizing an apartment in the big city might be your place or a big farmhouse out in the country is what you, maybe you visualize. You can have all the space that you want, okay? Maybe you'll choose a resort area where you can live upstairs from the shops and the boutiques or over the coffee shop in order to reside in your chosen element. Wherever your dream location is, visualize what it looks like. Your confidence is going to be bolstered, right? As you imagine living in a place that you want to be, not where you are now. You're going from A to B. Your B is your dream, okay? When you, then you have to look at when will you be comfortable with your life? Like, what is that comfort level? What does that look like? Right. Some people think, well, if I win the lottery, I'll have all the money I'll have and then I'll be happy. Well, that's not always true. But when you're when will you be comfortable with your life? You'll become more confident as you reflect on the point in your journey when you recognize you're comfortable and you feel either you're close to or you have achieved that like fantasy life or you have accomplished your desired result or you found your soulmate. Right. Maybe you met somebody while you're out and about and they just changed your life and they're a part of that but visualize it what does that look like imagining what your future will look like on a regular basis will help you build a mindset that encourages your confidence i see it all the time when you often entertain your visualizations you'll begin to realize this is going to happen and i can live that life if i want to Right. Dalai Lama, I think there's a famous saying um, with realizations of one's potential and self-confidence and one's ability, one can build a better, better world. It's about visualization. Next. And this is something that I've done. I've always surrounded myself with people that I wanted to be like. Right. And sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that's a bad thing. So study confidence. 
when you fully understand what it means to have confidence, you'll be better able to cultivate that. Those feelings are going to be within you. Some of your study should be more of a personal nature, looking within yourself, honestly. You always you have to look at that to see what you can tolerate. Then you can reflect on others regarding your confidence level because everybody's going to have a different level of confidence. Take a look at maybe a few questions here and write them down to aid you maybe in your study of confidence and what that looks like. What does having more confidence mean to you? All right. That was a question that was given to me. What does having more confidence mean to you? Each person has their own idea of what it could look like to be more confident. So maybe consider what it would mean to you to feel more hopeful, enthusiastic, and positive about life. And then look to see if the people that are in your life fit into that mold. Sometimes you'll have to make tough choices. And some people are just not a part of that for various reasons. But that's part of the confidence is to pick a plan, stick to it, and go with it. How will you change? That's another thing. Remember, there are consequences to your actions. How will you change? Thinking about how you'll change as you develop more confidence and chasing what is your dream at the moment is an, an integral part to actually developing confidence, right? So mentally, you'll begin to entertain thoughts of specific ways you'll show that you have your life under control. So perhaps you'll be more outgoing in a room full of people. Maybe you'll initiate conversations more often. Than, than, you know, than being just an observer. Or you might, you know, I don't know, if you're a tennis player, maybe you'll go f seek out the tennis players that are light years better than you and just take your beatings until you get the experience. Next, you'll have to look at this. How will you feel as you develop more confidence? What does that feel like? Right? Maybe you'll shake off those old feelings of not being good enough. Right? Maybe you'll likely feel happier. You'll be more comfortable with yourself and your feelings. And you'll feel more excited about the life that you've created or the life that you're chasing. Again, hard choices are going to come. And you'll have to live with those consequences. But if it's really what you want, that's what you do. When you gain confidence about who you are, your overall feelings will be more positive. How will your life be affected when you have more confidence? Another question. So you need to look for your visualizations about what your life will look like, and you'll come up with the ways your existence will be enhanced by this increased confidence that you've gotten. Okay. You'll likely socialize more. You'll have a more successful career, and you'll earn more money upon developing the confidence. You'll spend more time doing the things that you truly want to do with the people you truly want to be with and be around. In your estimation, okay, who is the most confident person that you know? Well, I had to answer these questions myself, right? Pick someone and identify them in your mind as Mr. or Mrs. Confidence. And how do they go about life? Having someone in your mind as your role model for confidence will provide you with a real life guide to use to cultivate your own confidence. Okay? But remember, choose your idols accordingly. Make sure that they're truly who they say they are. Make sure that it's not shiny object syndrome. Be a complete confident, good, genuine human being when it's over with, right? There's a difference between being cocky and confident. Think about your relatives like grandparents, parents, aunts, your uncle, or even an older sibling to your, you know, list of people that appear confident. Maybe a teacher you admire or a supervisor or a coworker or somebody that you met at a conference that really you saw on stage and they really flipped the switch and, and made a difference for you. That's who you want to focus on and make sure that they fit into the mold of what you want to do. Because again, being confident in the process leads to more confidence at the end result. What can you learn from observe, you know, your observations of Mr. and Mrs. Confidence? 
Okay. It's not necessarily for you to talk to your role model about their confidence level. However, if you're comfortable with approaching them, feel free to ask them the questions. That's part of the confidence is having the nerve to go and start that conversation with somebody that you respect or somebody that makes you feel good or somebody that, you know, is your soulmate in the journey to where you want to be. Your keen observations are often all that requires you to learn how to be more confident. So maybe take notice of Mr. or Mrs. Confidence, their attitude, their appearance, their language, their manners, their approach to life, whatever. What do you see? Then you got to practice some of those things to see if you're comfortable with what you've observed. For example, if Mrs. Confidence seems to always have a positive attitude, work on developing your own positive attitude. Do it in layers. If she has a great sense of humor, think about ways you too can introduce humor into your social repertoire. Okay? If Miss Confidence shows proper manners and is polite to people and a genuinely nice human being, follow that example. So what I'm saying is the observance of Mr. and Mrs. Confidence carefully charted so you can adapt some of their habits. As you feel yourself changing, your confidence is going to go up a level. Right? Find out what people are reading. What reading materials about developing confidence will help you? Right? Well, a wealth of self-help information is available. There's no shortage of that. Visit your local bookstore and, or ask other confident people what they're reading. They say some of the most successful people in the world read up to 60 books a year. Find those people and find out what they're reading right? Browse the back of the books for a list of references to the other ideas of who to study regarding confidence. Those resources will likely have, you know, research-backed ideas, okay, for how you can successfully develop your own. When you develop your own confidence, right, the more knowledge you attain, the more successful you'll be. Next, use the old interweb. Which websites can you, you know, pursue or for your ideas? As you gain insight and information about confidence, your own confidence will be bolstered. Websites operated by, you know, they had me looking at like the American Psychological Association and Psychology Today. I found them super informative. Okay. Uh, these professional blogs and journals provide a treasure of research that somebody else has already done regarding personality characteristics like confidence. Your personal and intellectual, as they say, study of confidence will help you cultivate your own confidence. Reflecting on what having confidence means to you and how you would change and how you would feel as a confident person are hugely important. Next, or also, imagining how your life would be affected if you were confident helps you gain a better understanding of confidence and how to grow and get there. Finding confidence role models will provide you with opportunities to observe, learn, and then apply some of the roles to your way of living. Next, expanding your knowledge base of confidence through reading self-help books and discovering helpful websites. They're going to help you take moments of downtime to indulge in that. And that'll help build your little confidence reserves, as they say. Right. So next, you got to prepare yourself for self-confidence. It's not something that you just wake up with. You can take some simple, concrete steps to ensure that you're well on your way to finding the confidence that you want. Consider practicing the following suggestions here in this podcast in your everyday life. You'll be amazed at how your feelings of confidence will increase. Right. The more you perform these steps and, and trials, the more self-assured you're going to be, I promise. The first one, super simple. I do it all the time. Smile. You'll likely agree with me here that when you see people smiling, you believe them to be more confident and happy than somebody walking around with a freaking scowl on their face or somebody walking around looking uninvolved. So even when you don't feel confident, a smile will boost your spirit, change your face, and it changes the face of all the people around you. The next one, this one's hit and miss. Okay. 
humor. When you use humor, others will naturally regard you as being more self-confident. There's a caveat here. So you need to work to infuse humor when you're talking to other people. But watch how others bring humor into their conversations when you do it, if you're unsure about testing the waters there. Now, it's not about being hysterically funny or a stand-up comedian. It's about just not taking life so serious. And sometimes the humility of just letting people know that you're a human being as well. Because people can relate. So consistently being funny, just pay attention to that. You'll know when the right time to interject that and when to not. Really, it's all about being relaxed and being having a little humility as well as humor. Next, I want you to consistently engage in physical activities. The more in touch you are with your body and how it works, the more confident you'll be. And there's no better way to help you know your body than to take part in some regular fitness. Right? Get in shape. Feel better. Mentally, physically. Becoming and staying physically fit and strong is one of the most confidence-building behaviors you can do. Because when you feel good and you think you look good, you're unstoppable. Take care of your appearance. When you look good, you feel good. And feeling good about yourself equals confidence. Look your best most of the time. You'll find yourself smiling more and feeling more confident. Okay? Next, you want to strive to be good at something. Just like one thing. Find and develop a skill or talent that you can be really, really good at. And you're going to love that feeling. Mine is public speaking. I have a niche where I basically, my calling card is the fact that I can be called at the last minute to either replace somebody if you have somebody that cancels out on you and you need somebody. I can come in very little notice and speak to a room of people that do anything, any kind of business. I can come in and speak to them. That's what I'm really good at. So when I go in and do it, I'm not flustered, right? I am under control and I can control the room and I can control my atmosphere and I can control my, the way I look. I can control the way I speak. Okay. There's soft skills involved with that. Eye contact, voice inflection, body language, all those little things that you can do that you can be prepared with that make you the most prepared person in the room. Right. Then you need to put yourself in a position to utilize those skills and those talents. As you practice doing whatever you can do well, you'll see that your confidence level goes through the freaking roof, man. If you're good at working with people, volunteer at your local hospital. Make somebody feel better. If you're a great, I don't know, sewing person, seamstress, take in some mending work for other people that can't do it for themselves. If you do a great job keeping your yard in order, help your neighbors make their yard look better if they're not able to. Don't let that talent go to waste. As you practice your own skills, you'll realize you do have confidence in yourself in those areas. Once you have confidence in one aspect, that gives you the key that works on any door. Okay, so once you have confidence in one aspect, you've opened the door for it to spread to any door that you want to open. Here's another thing. I have a program called the Discomfort Zone. Okay, and this is a big part of that. Do things that you fear. If you tell yourself it's okay to be afraid as long as you follow through with something, then you can find the confidence required to create whatever that is. Some people don't like public speaking, but you know what? If you do it, they're not going to kill you. They're not going to eat you. It might not go the way you planned, but I promise you the people out in the audience would be in a much worse position in your position than you are but at least you took the shot. And if you keep taking enough shots, you're going to rein into the target. So perhaps you're afraid to start your own small business, mowing people's yards, whatever. It's that case. If that is the case, start small by asking people in your neighborhood, if you can do their yards, right? Or maybe you don't like speaking to groups of people like we spoke about a minute ago. If not, place yourself in a position to do it anyway. There are millions of people who've have this very common fear of public speaking. 
and they found that their confidence by taking like a Dale Carnegie course, right, helped tremendously. Actually, I've got my Dale Carnegie little green book sitting here that I took back in like 1987. There are many methods to help you overcome fears. You just have to face your fear and try them. As you prepare to have confidence, an amazing phenomena takes place, really. You'll find you already have some confidence on which to build. A lot of people don't even realize that until they do it. Doing things like smiling more, taking part in physical activities, and keeping care of your personal appearance, those are the building blocks and the foundation that will help you develop the self-confidence that you need to do other things. Also, being good at something, using your unique talents that you're already good at consistently and doing things that you fear will help you prepare for and find that jewel of whatever it is that you're seeking, which is confidence. Okay, so the next thing to this whole puzzle is discover what the motivation is. Your confidence is ultimately connected to and affected by your levels of motivation in life. So therefore, it's up to you to discover your own motivation to pursue the life you desire. And when you do, freaking confidence goes through the roof, man. As you can see, confidence, motivation, and achievement of your life dreams work together in two ways. Being motivated to go after the life that you want brings more confidence, and having confidence motivates you to seek out that desired path. So try, you know, some techniques to discover what motivates you, whatever it is. Start a habit. Read one self-help book a month. Reading and expanding your, your knowledge is important to your pursuit of confidence. It doesn't just happen. You don't just wake up with it, right? Reading one self-help book a month will serve as a great motivation for you to pursue whatever you're seeking. Your path to self-development will enrich and fulfill you if you read one self-help book a month. Okay. Then read other books that inspire you, right? Taking in new information, that stokes the fire of creativity and imagination and motivation, just like movies do. Therefore, you know, if you're exposing yourself to any new information that interests you, fascinates you, or excites you, as my coach says, always, and that's something he tells me all the time, expose yourself to stuff that interests you, fascinates you, and excites you. And that will aid you in your plan to build confidence and go after whatever it is you're dreaming of. Next, have a simple conversation with someone that you see and respect as successful. This person could be someone you look up to. They could be from the field that you hope to work in someday or the field that you're already in and you strive to be like them. Or it might be someone who works in your current field that you've kind of watched from afar and that you truly desire to be like or be around, okay, because of their excellence. Before the interview, though, ponder what you want to know about that person's success and make sure that you're asking them for the right reasons. Write down those questions so you'll be prepared. You could ask the person to meet for coffee, for lunch, a Zoom meeting, right, or come to your house for an evening, let the individual know in advance the reason for your meeting, though. Don't sideswipe him. You might mention that you want to ask about her or his work habits and career development, okay? Because your goal is to learn more about motivation. Ensure that you include some questions about how that person has remained motivated to get where they are. Here's another one. And I know this one's touchy because some people don't get along with their relatives, but talk to your parents and your grandparents. Ask them to share how they were successful in the roles as parents or in their prospective careers. Got to keep in mind that your plan is to discover what motivates others. So you need to ask things like, how did you keep going forward when things got tough? Not all the good stuff. And what got you through those rough spots? That's, That's knowledge and experience that is valuable. Next, you want to hang out with people who are positive. When you have a chance to be close and personal with the positive and successful people, you'll learn how others remain positive through times that are trying and what they do to stay motivated in the most difficult situations. 
plus, you're going to be encouraged to be positive and move forward in your own life based off of those conversations. Ultimately, you'll become motivated to pursue the very life you've always wanted based off of what those people say or the people that you meet. Okay. Make sure there's a body of work there. Make sure it's just not shiny object syndrome. Write down in simple steps what you must do. Okay, because going back to the previous, I've met many of my idols, okay, in life. And I was terribly, terribly disappointed after I got to know them. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Write down in simple steps what you must do. It's time to get like a tangible, touchable picture of what your life now looks like and the steps to follow from this point forward to get to B right? You're moving from A to B. What is your first baby step you can take to be one inch closer to what your new reality that you want to achieve is? So maybe like I do, I have a checklist for everything. I think a check checklist to check off as you succeed your little milestones and completing each step is super motivating because then you get to visually see your progress. Your list will boost your confidence and keep you from, keep you moving forward on your quest. And based off of what we just spoke about, set many goals and milestones and timelines about how you will achieve this step. For example, each month, you could plan to pursue and complete just one of your steps on your list. And that's what you focus on. Celebrate each success, of course. You'll stay focused and motivated. Your confidence will build. Plus, you'll feel excited about moving closer toward your desired life. Some steps may take you longer than one month to achieve, like a six-week course, right? Or completing a college class that you need to get where you need to be. But the idea here is to use your list to stay motivated and keep track of your milestones. And your Discovering your motivation will increase your confidence tenfold, promise. Knowing that you're moving forward is a wonderful feeling. So reading, interviewing a successful person, and talking with close family members and friends about how they've stayed motivated will shed some light on how you can focus on being motivated as well. So in addition to hanging out with positive people, writing out these steps that you can take to work toward achieving your dreams or whatever it is that you're trying to achieve and using that list to move forward will serve you to kind of keep the fires lit, right? Whatever you're working towards, you'll be able to achieve. So just expect success. Building your confidence can and will happen. When you expect it, you'll achieve it. Again, coach tells me all the time, when you expect success, you'll achieve your goal. No matter what your endeavor is, there are many different pathways to accomplish it. So your efforts to develop your confidence are enhanced when you expect success. So try some of these ideas. This is stuff that I do. Again, I'm never going to tell you something that I don't do myself. First one is, and anybody that knows me knows this, think positively. I affirm within myself, and you can do the same, that you'll accomplish your goal. Keeping a positive mindset will aid you in your quest to expect success. Next, refuse to allow negativity into your life. Preventing negativity will provide a space in your life to fill in with positivity. Right? If the practicing this method means you must avoid certain people, so be it. Just say no to the negativity. I see negativity as buckets right? They're handing me a big empty bucket of nothing. There's no value to it. There's just a big hole inside. So I'm just going to take their buckets and I'm going to fill them with positivity and I'll put them on the shelf, right? Practicing and refuting negative thoughts. Just try using what I do and it's simple, but it works. It's thought stopping. When a second you start getting a negative thought creeping in your head, I snap and say no. exactly what I do. When something negative creeps into my head, I snap and say no. Then I replace no with a more calming and trans, you know, whatever, something that helps me relax with whatever that is. An instant thought of something happy, an instant time. I'll go to something that we were talking uh, about uh, earlier that, you know, and I'm going to talk about it again here in just a second, is about writing down the positive things that people have said to you or the positive people that you've been around, 
write down the stuff that they used to say to you that made you feel good and make sure you write their name next to it so you remember for the rest of your life who said that. Because we always tend to pick out the ugly stuff, the negative stuff, or the moment that we weren't happy with that particular thing that we were usually happy with, but at the moment we weren't, and we pick those things on why we're not you know, involved anymore or things change. Take the good, write it down, and write their name next to it. You're going to see that it builds a story because if multiple people are telling you the same things in a positive way, then that usually means it's true. When you learn to block negative thoughts from your life, you'll be more likely to expect success. Vow to move forward in the process of achieving your dream. Promise yourself you'll work your steps from the list that you made to get closer and closer to whatever it is that you desire. List your top five strengths. Reviewing your strengths will help you realize that you have a lot of things going for you. You're strong in a number of ways. You have talents and you have skills. And if you're good at those things, you'll learn to excel in other areas too using those experiences. Knowing your strengths will help you feel good about you. And this is what I was talking about a second ago. Journal the compliments that others consistently give you. Okay? And, and use back up a bit. Because here's the thing, when, when somebody, something or somebody new comes in, they're telling you what you want to hear. Give it a body of work. Journal the compliments that others consistently give you. Nothing helps you feel you can succeed in anything like basking in the positive words of others and, and what they've said to you over a, a period of time. So you never forget them and write them down. Reread them whenever you need a boost. Look for the common threads and the compliments that you jot down. The commonalities, okay, will tell you something about your strengths. Perhaps you were, it has some more positive that you were unaware of that you possessed until you look at this body of work. When you take these steps to build your expectations to succeed, you'll be closer to developing the confidence that you need. Confidence is everything. Thinking positively, using thought stopping to, to banish negative thoughts and promising yourself to move forward are powerful, powerful ways and steps in your quest for confidence. So also knowing your top strengths, journaling positive comments from others, and knowing how others feel about you will aid you to expect success. You're on your way to confidence. Get inspired. When you're truly inspired, you'll be compelled to have confidence. What does it mean to be inspired, okay? To be inspired is to be especially encouraged to do something. You're excited and compelled to go forward regardless of whatever the quest is. And whatever that quest is, you can overcome whatever challenge is thrown at you. Seek out people, places, and things that inspire you. Right? Think back to prior successes, prior successful relationships, people that helped you, people that built you up, people that, that locked arms with you when things were tough. Okay? What is the one thing that you're most proud of in your life? Write that situation down about you know, what you thought about it at the time, how you felt, what you did, how things turned out, and let your pride like flow into your ink. You made it through as a result and you are wiser, better, kinder, and stronger. Don't ever minimize that. People that were in your sphere helped you and helped you make it through. And as a result, you became wiser, kinder, stronger, and more capable. So build on those successes. So what can you learn about that experience? Well, this step is the most important of all when reflecting on what you've done well over the years, okay? When you connect with what you learned, that's knowledge that you'll carry with you for the rest of your life. Those are experiences that you may be able to turn into knowledge for somebody else to help them through a situation. And knowledge is a great confidence builder. Profit from the challenges. See challenges as they are. Chances to practice living so you can do better the next time. Last but not least, you got to be brave, right? Find the courage to revisit past rough periods in your life and identify what you learned from those difficult times. Let your lessons from prior challenges build your confidence going forward and ignite whatever momentum to move forward. And just acknowledge the fact that you made it through that rough period. The bumpy path that you traveled brought you to where you are today. So recognize that you can go even further. There's no confidence. There's no better confidence booster than knowing that you made it through some very 
tough bullshit, trying times, and now you've emerged and you're in the light again and you're clear headed. When you seek to get inspired, you'll become excited about whatever you're working on. Your inspiration will instill the confidence that you need to keep moving forward in the direction of your dreams. And you're going to find that the people around you are more confident too. But just be real, right? You got to make sure that you're doing you and you're taking care of yourself. But there's also been things and people in your life that you need to make sure that you don't minimize. Finding your own confidence is a journey well worth taking. So as you progress through the above steps, right, that we talked about and the interest in your own life and and the interest is going to grow, you'll realize that those people helped you accomplish what you needed to do. So you can take on anything that you put your mind to now. Visualize your dreams. Discover your motivation because it will urge you in the direction of whatever you want. Right? Expect, Just expect success. When you know that you can do it, you will. Find inspiration because it lights up your ass and compels you to move forward. Know that you truly can develop the confidence that you desire and start the journey in confidence like right now. Right? Because the world's waiting. Just remember, there's a fine line behind, you know, for motivation and confidence and all that other stuff. Just make sure that you're clear on what it is that you're trying to achieve and not just putting a Band-Aid on something. Super important because really, the sky's the limit. There's no, there's no ceiling. You can do whatever you desire to do. I hope this helps. You guys be safe. Take care. Thank you for letting me share my homework assignment with you. I appreciate it. I hope it was helpful. Just go out there and be you and say something nice to somebody. Have a great day. You've been listening to the Productive Not Busy Podcast with Coach Wayne. Join us next time for more money-making strategies to help you have less stress and more free time. Follow us on Facebook at Productive Not Busy, on Instagram at frontline.coach.wayne, and on Twitter at Wayne New Jr., And remember, be productive, not busy.